One of the biggest business stories in technology has been the streaming wars. Disney and others lining up to do battle with the mighty Netflix, but it's easy to forget that Netflix itself was once a company many in Hollywood either ignored or laughed at. Well, one could argue Mark Randolph had the last laugh. He's the co-founder of Netflix and served as its first CEO, and he has shared his story in his book, That Will Never Work, The Birth of Netflix and the Amazing Life of an Idea. Mark joining us from New York. Good morning. Thanks very much for being with us. Ah, oh, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Thank you. You know, one of the things we, we quickly learned uh, in your journey and you telling your story, there's this common uh, told story about the late fees that co-founder Reed Hastings was frustrated with at Blockbuster and uh, so frustrated so that that led to the launch of Netflix, which is sort of correct, but maybe you can set the record straight on what exactly happened. Well, I think sort of correct is probably a good way to put it. You know, any company has a long winding path to success and there's lots of ingredients. So there's a person who may have spent their entire year in direct mar life in direct marketing, someone else who knows algorithms, someone maybe had a late fee on a movie. But it's when you bring all those things together and then mix them and then struggle for years that eventually this idea emerges. You know, and people forget that Netflix did struggle for years and years we were almost purchased by Amazon. We tried to sell ourselves to Blockbuster. Spent many years in a tiny, dirty office with disgusting carpeting. You know, we haven't always been this global streaming company with 150 million subscribers. Maybe you could shed some light on both of those stories. I'm sure it's going to surprise some people that there was possibly a deal where Amazon would have owned Netflix, and, and perhaps just as surprising, the Blockbuster may have bought the business. You know, you know, there's lots of things that could have gone wrong. And it was probably only about two or three months into the Netflix story when we got this call from Jeff Bezos saying, why don't you come up to Seattle and have a chat? And hard as it may be to believe, back then, Amazon only sold books. But we knew it was a matter of time before they wanted to get into video. And we knew that they were thinking about buying us to do so. And in some ways, it was an amazing sense of uh, validation because this was an idea that everyone said would never work, that my wife said would never work. And here was Jeff Bezos, the pioneer of e-commerce, saying we might be interested. But we went up there and we talked and he kind of made us a low ball offer. And on the plane flight home, Reed Hastings and I, my co-founder, looked at each other and decided we weren't quite ready to hand someone else the keys yet. We were just getting started. And in many ways, that was probably a pretty good call. You know, and two and a half years later, it was the other way around. We were in deep trouble and decided the only way out was to try and sell ourselves. And Blockbuster at that time was the one to try. But in this case, when we flew up to Dallas to chat with them, we got a very different reaction. They laughed at us. And that strengthened our resolve that really the only way out was through. There you go. And now there's just one Blockbuster location left. Um, one thing I've heard you talk about is the fact that the, the journey of startup and, and figuring out profitable business, we're talking a lot about businesses that are that trying to figure out how to make money. I mean, there were a couple of years there where you guys were spitballing, you were trying all sorts of ideas uh, before you really figured out a business model that worked, which, which I think is kind of an interesting message for a lot of startups. You know, it's true, I am not a big believer in ideas. Ideas are a dime a dozen, and I've never met a successful company that ended up with the same idea they started with, and Netflix was no different. I mean, when everyone told us that will never work, well, they were right with our original idea. We were mailing DVDs by mail, we were charging due dates, and we had late fees. And it took us a year and a half of experimentation, trying one thing after another, crazy ideas before we finally after a year and a half stumbled on the idea which actually allowed us to have a real business. It was that eventual no due dates, no late fees subscription business that in many ways transformed Netflix and built the platform that allowed us to transition to streaming many years later. Mark, you spend a lot of time analyzing startups and the, and the journey of them and, and also comparing that to big companies that have to change, right? Innovate or die. And now we're looking at this very established business that is Netflix and the common storyline seems to be streaming wars. Can Netflix continue to compete with the likes of Disney and Apple and traditional media companies all launching their own streaming services? What do you think? 
Well, you know, everyone right now is trying to handicap that race. And I think I can't certainly comment on their strategies and tactics since I don't work there now. But I think it's instrumental when you're trying to figure out next moves to go way back and look at the culture of a company like Netflix. And Netflix, in many ways, still behaves like a startup. They're still willing to abandon the past to do whatever's right in the future. They still have this relentless focus. And I think that focus is what sets them apart. Because you look at who they're competing with. You look at Disney, who of course has cruise lines and theme parks. You look at Apple, who's in the hardware business and has retail stores. Whereas Netflix has one business. They are focused. You know, when I think the time that I would decide to sell Netflix short is when they decided to have a cell phone or launch a Netflix theme park. So are you saying we should expect more willingness for Netflix to weave and change depending on where things go? Absolutely. In fact, if you look back historically from the very beginning, culture comes from not what you say, but how you act, how the founders act. And we, over many, many times, are willing to walk away from successful businesses that were not the future. For example, at the beginning, we also sold DVDs. And at one point, it was almost 98% of our revenue. But we realized that was going to go away. And we had one day turned it off and walked away from 98% of our revenue. Many years later, when we realized that the disc business was in some ways impeding the ability to do everything right for the streaming business, made the decision that from now on, it is all about what's right for streaming. And I have no question that should Netflix face a similar problem in the future, they'll make exactly as focused a decision about what's right going forward and not try and protect a legacy business, not worry about disrupting some existing revenue stream. All right, so they've made some big changes. Worth, worth pointing out, maybe some people don't know, there are still some people subscribing for the DVDs, a smaller number these days. Um, Mark, before you go, obviously the, this explores the journey of Netflix, uh, your book, uh, but when, when it comes to big ideas, where are you looking next? What's, what's on your radar these days? Well, as I referred to earlier, I'm not a big person who's into ideas, because they really don't count. What counts is the execution, and so what I'm looking at are the founders. I consider myself much more of being about picking the right jockey. And they lead me into some fascinating technologies. One of the companies I'm working with is doing robotics, another one doing AI. But I didn't start with the technology, I started with the person, because that fundamentally is what makes a company successful. All right, Mark, good to get your perspective. Thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure, thanks for having me. Mark Randolph, co-founder of Netflix and the author of That Will Never Work, The Birth of Netflix and the Amazing Life of an Idea.